David Weizard here, and you are watching Paratech 10. If you care to give me just five or ten minutes of your time, then I will give you the benefit of my 50 years or so of building race winning engines. Hey Dave, come here just a second. Yes. Um, what's the deal? We've got a couple letters from your viewers that's uh, been asking me about the, the different aspects of uh, tunnel rams and the single carb uh, intake setup. So what do you think about that? Do you think that'd make a good subject today? Well, if we're going to shoot down the race only myth, yes, I think we'll do that. Right? I think a lot of viewers will be interested. Let's do it. For a true street strip motor, there's nothing like the simplicity of a single four barrel on a good intake manifold. It produces good results without spending a fortune. This is the intake manifold. It's an Edelbrock Super Victor that I am using on a 427 inch small block I'm building. Flows very well, makes very good power, and loves a spacer like this. But let's say we want to step up. Tunnel wrap. Where do we go from here? First, let's take a look at Holly's street tunnel ram that's been around forever and a day. It's over on the screen here, so let's go over there. What you see here is the street tunnel ram that Holly brought out, oh, probably back in the 60s. And uh, note that it's got the plenum has provisions for two four barrel carburetors. That'll work well. But first, let's look at our alternative. This is the 21st century, and fuel injection is pretty powerful medium for us to work with and very getting very popular. Let's go back and take a look at this version modernized. This is an updated version the bottom half of the manifold we just looked at on the screen. Essentially, it is the same except it has fuel injection bosses on it. Right, on this particular one, I am going to build a very exotic fuel injection system uh, uh, equipped car. This is um, uh, a heat shield on it, which is, we, we don't need to put any induction heat on an injected engine, it's fine enough that it gets the job done. So this manifold here has been ported and thermally, uh, uh, has thermal management on it. Now I want you to look at the runners here. They are not huge runners. This is a typical 23 degree Chevy sized port. Now let's look at the, from the top view here. Notice these D-shaped ports, which are classic on this manifold since day one. They are not overly large. What we're looking at here is a manifold which does not have huge ports. Also, it's relatively long when you add this length to the length in the intake runner in the head. Here's the carbureted version of what I've just shown you. And here down, it's the same except for a lack of uh, injection bosses. But note that this uh, pretty big plan here, this, which works fine if we're going to have car brushes on. But we're going to come back to this in a moment. Let me take you back to the red mount injection manifold for the moment. This manifold, instead of having a plenum like the carbureted engine does, is going to run with an air box like this with a air valve here. Right. However, there is a problem that the air has to do some pretty abrupt turns to go from that plenum down these runners. So, what I've done here is I've made up a spacer. And if you look at this spacer, you'll see that the tops of the runners are directed 
so that they catch the air. So see how this one goes down at an angle. Whereas the back rudders are vertical because the air is not going to go past those. Now this plate in itself is worth about 20 horsepower on, a, on what would nominally be about a 550 horsepower small block. Now, when we add this here, we've got a slightly taller setup, but it's still not as tall as the carburetted one. Let's go back to our classic carburetted manifold. The question is, is do tunnel rams work on the street? Well, rather than go through all this, I'm going to introduce you to my friend Andy Wood, whose truck this is going on. Now Andy has run this manifold on several engines. I'll let him tell you about that. Right? Just to give you some reference here, Andy's engines are championship winning engines on the drag strip. So let me call Andy over and he will give you that discussion. Thank you David for the kind of words. Talking about tunnel rams, there's a lot of misconception out on the internet. People say that it's impossible to run a tunnel ram on the street. When you look at this tunnel ram here, you see the virtues of having a long, narrow runner that gives huge torque on the street. And that's what you're after. You're after torque because that's what motivates you. This right here will make killer power above 4,000 RPMs, but it falls right in between a single plane and a dual plane. So when you feel like that you're trying to make a decision, this here is a pretty good choice if the hood clearance allow for it. Now let's talk about the carburetors on this. These carburetors look like they're just straight 1960s vintage Hollies, 1850s. But these have been highly modified. They have uh, machine step down leg boosters that help itemize the fuel better, and they're vacuum secondary. Now, these are rated at 600 CFM, which gives you 1200 CFM on the street, which sounds like a lot, but the key to it is having the vacuum secondary, because you don't need to have more throttle than the vehicle will allow. That is the key to winning races, is power management. Okay, Andy. Your experience. Look, you're a championship winning race engine builder. You know how to build fast cars for the racetrack, but you're also an experienced street engine builder. This is your intake. Why is it your choice? Because it works. Give us the lowdown on why you'd rather have this. This here being a vacuum secondary, it gives you all of the elements that you need. You know, when you're stabbing the throttle, you can tune these secondary pots to come in when you want them to and when you when the vehicle really needs it versus when you want it. Uh, a lot of times our foot is misconception. You know, we think that we want more throttle, but in fact, the vehicle can't take it. So that is one of the keys to having a successful street ride is having something that will hook up and not just burn the tires off. Yeah, yeah, well... There you go, and straight from the horse's mouth, right? Andy's working both ends of the scale here, and this is his choice. But this is a early 60s manifold, or somewhere in the 60s. Let's look and see what Holly are doing now. Well, we've looked at what can be done with some of the manifolds that have been tried and tested over decades. Let's have a look and see what Holly are doing for the 21st century. This is their fuel injection manifold for the small block four. It's available with several different tops. So not only can you have a front mounted air valve like this, you could also have two four barrel carburetors on it or two four barrel throttle bodies on it and the fuel injection. So it's very versatile. Now, let's have a look and see what Holly designed into this. We've had this on the flow bench, and there's one thing that is pretty evident. The runners are designed 
for a very high output engine, which means that Holly were aiming for the top end of the market. This manifold will be right at home on a 900 horsepower small block Ford. But you're going to have to build a pretty stout motor to be able to use the full potential of this as is. So here's what I'm seeing, right? This manifold is going to be an absolutely terrific street manifold so long as the engine builder sizes the runners here appropriately. What we find is that this size here is a big number horsepower size. For, I'm, I'm building something around 700 horsepower. I'm going to have to make this opening here probably 20% uh, smaller. Same shape, blend it all down. And what that, what's, that's going to mean is, is I'll get that street torque while still making 700 horsepower. I will also get the street drivability of a very civilized motor. So that's what Hall is offering at the moment. With the rate that they're going, with their development of fuel injection systems, who knows what they'll have this time next year. Andy, how's your week going with building your 393? It's been a pretty good week, Dave. Uh, got the rocker geometry set up on the uh, long block. How about you? What you been working on? I just went through the push rod uh, being on a small block Chevy. But uh, what I've been working on is uh, I needed a prelude tape. Yeah, well, I've been I've been battling porting this uh, this week pretty much. Uh, working on uh, a pretty exotic big block head casting, which is coming along pretty well but it's not following the same kind of rules as the 24 degree heads that I'm most used to doing. So it's been grind a bit, flow a bit, grind a bit, all bits of them. As for whatever we're gonna talk about now, we'll deal with that in the next video. So for now, I'm gonna say, I'll see you next time. And we'll be busy between now and then preparing our next tech video for you. Thank you for watching.